The images on your screen were created using an L system from just a few simple rules and some Python code. What if we took the same mathematical system that generated these beautiful fractal-like patterns and applied it to composing music? Today, we're going to discover how to do that. Recall that an L system starts with an initial sequence of symbols called an axiom. We apply production rules that define how our symbols should be rewritten. Once transformed, we take that new sequence and apply the rules again. We can generate potentially complex and interesting patterns by iteratively reapplying these production rules to each new transformed sequence. If you'd like a more detailed explanation of L systems and their implementation in Python, I encourage you to check out my previous video. But for now, let's dive in and code a basic L system to manipulate strings. We'll create a new Python function called Lindenmeyer system that will generate a new string by applying production rules over multiple iterations. As arguments, it will require the user to specify an initial axiom, a dictionary of production rules, and the number of iterations. We'll use a for loop to transform and retransform the axiom, which will repeat as many times as the user specifies via the iterations parameter. We'll translate the axiom according to our rules with a list comprehension. For each character or symbol in the string, we can use the dictionary's get method. This method allows us to check whether that symbol exists as a key in the dictionary. It takes two arguments, the symbol we're checking and the fallback value if no rule is defined. We specify this fallback value as the symbol itself. So if a rule is found, we get the transformed value. But if no rule is found, we keep the original symbol. Next, we'll update the axiom variable. We'll use Python's join method, which allows us to concatenate the elements of our translated list back into a single string. We have now overwritten the original axiom with the newly translated sequence, ready for the next iteration or final output. When all iterations have been performed, we can return the axiom variable, which now contains the final output of the L system. We'll test this in a main function, which we'll call at the bottom of the script. After defining our rules dictionary, we'll use the print function to see how an initial axiom of the single character A is transformed after 10 iterations. Notice that in this L system, the character C is rewritten as A, B, E, C. But a rule has not been defined for rewriting the character E, therefore E never gets rewritten in successive iterations. Thus far we've used L systems to build abstract sequences of characters. By reinterpreting those characters, we can apply the same principles of L systems to generate music from simple repeatable rules. Our sequences can now represent pitches, rhythms, chords or other musical elements. Let's turn to the Music21 library to see how this might work. A simple approach is to map the characters in our sequence directly to musical elements like pitches, durations or chords. The production rules we have already defined include five characters, A, B, C, D and E. We could map these to the first five pitches of a scale. In this case, let's use the Aeolian mode also known as the natural minor scale. We'll create a pitch map, a dictionary to link the characters in our L system to specific pitches. Each character will serve as a key. The corresponding pitch names A3, B3, C4, D4 and E4 will be the values. We'll create a Music21 stream object to hold the music we're about to generate. We'll loop over each symbol in the sequence generated by our Linda Meyer system function. We'll pass an initial axiom of A, our predefined production rules, and specify 10 iterations. Inside the loop, we'll append a new note object to our stream. Its pitch will be determined by looking up the current symbol in our pitch map. For now, we'll assign a 16th duration to every note. Outside of the loop, we'll call mystream.show and run the program to display what our L system has generated. The self-similar nature of the sequence produced by our L system provides an underlying coherence. These simple shifting diatonic patterns resemble those we sometimes find in minimalist music. They might serve as a background texture or as the foundation for something more complex. Now suppose that instead of assigning regular 16th notes, we want to define rhythmic material for our sequence as well. Just as we map characters to pitches, we can also map them to durations. One approach would be to define a new set of production rules to generate a separate sequence for rhythms. But we could alternatively expand the L system we've already created to handle both pitches and rhythms within a single sequence. 
To achieve this, we'll introduce three new symbols into our rules dictionary. We'll create a duration map, another dictionary to connect these new characters to note values. We'll use 0 0.25, 0 0.75 and 0 0.5, representing a 16th note, a dotted 16th note and an 8th note. Next, we'll create a current duration variable and initialize it with a duration object with an 8th note value. As before, we'll convert the characters in our string to musical elements within a for loop. This time we'll add a conditional statement. If the current symbol is in duration map, we'll update the current duration using the map with the symbol as the key. Where the symbol is not in the duration map, then it must be in our pitch map. So we'll use else to handle this and append a new note to our stream, setting its pitch by looking up the current symbol in pitch map and assigning its duration with the current duration variable. When we run the program, our L system introduces some rhythmic variation to the same sequence of pitches. In our current example, we're working with just five pitches. To generate music with a wider range of pitch material, we could simply expand our production rules to produce more characters, which in turn could be mapped to additional pitches. But there's another approach we might consider. Rather than mapping characters in our string directly to pitches, we could map them to intervals. Each symbol would determine how far the pitch moves up or down from the previous one. To implement this in our program, we'll expand our production rules to include the characters F and G. We'll replace our pitch map with a new interval map, where the characters A to F represent intervals of 1 to 6 semitones. We will use the character G to control the direction of intervals. Whenever we encounter G in our string, we will reverse the interval direction. This effectively doubles the number of intervals defined in our interval map, representing from 1 to 6 semitones both ascending and descending. We'll create a variable called interval direction and initialize it as the integer 1. As we'll see later, 1 will indicate an ascending interval. Since each subsequent pitch will now be determined relative to the previous pitch, we'll define an initial pitch in a variable called current pitch. Within our for loop, after checking whether we need to update the duration, we'll use an elif statement to check if the current symbol is the character g. If so, we'll update the interval direction variable by multiplying it by minus 1 to reverse the direction. To update the current pitch in our else statement, we'll use its transpose method. The argument we supply will determine the interval by which the pitch is transposed. We'll look up the current symbol in our interval map and multiply it by the interval direction to control whether the interval is ascending or descending. We'll create a new note, setting its pitch with current pitch and its duration with current duration. Then we'll append it to our stream. Running the program reveals the results of our interval-based mapping an endlessly twisting melody that continually meanders from low to high and back again. The overall dramatic shape is quite uniform. This approach to generating music works well if we want to create a sustained atmosphere or if we are interested in music that emphasises process. But what it's especially useful for is generating a large pool of material to draw from when composing. Our example can be considered a melodic bank that we as composers can now select from and rearrange to build a more structured piece of music. It's also worth noting that we can embed structure directly into the rules of our L system. Consider these rules, for example. The rules for the characters A, B and C are straightforward and similar to those we have already encountered. Notice though that these characters refer only to each other, forming a distinct group. The same applies to D, E and F, which evolve separately from the first group. The rule for X refers to the A, B, C group, while the rule for Y refers to the D, E, F group but both X and Y then refer back to each other, combining symbols from both groups. If we start with the character X, the string grows rapidly. Notice the distinct patterns that emerge, one tied to the first group and another to the second, all linked by X and Y. When mapped to musical elements, this kind of L system can create sections of contrasting material. There are many more possibilities for applying L systems to generate music. For instance, 
we can map characters to other parameters like harmony, dynamics, instrumentation, or timbre. We could even use L systems to manipulate musical motifs where each character represents a transformation, such as transposition, retrograde, inversion, or augmentation. We could generate multiple voices in a composition from a single L system, assigning different characters to different voices. Instead of mapping a character to just one element, we could use a stochastic approach where each character is mapped to multiple elements, each with its own probability of being selected. Let me know your own ideas for composing with L systems. Be sure to leave your feedback, thoughts and suggestions in the comments section below. I hope you found this helpful. Please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.